Sean Diddy Combs' son, Christian King Combs, has been accused of sexual assault. Grace Omar Kaig, who was working as a steward on a yacht chartered by the Combs family, alleges she was assaulted by King in 2022 during what was sold as a wholesome family excursion. Sean Diddy Combs is in the headlines again, this time being named in a new lawsuit alongside his son, Christian. I expect them to go to the grand jury very soon to get an indictment. Ironically, those video servers now used to criticize law enforcement. Excessive force, simply grabbing your sons and putting them in handcuffs and peaceably taking them outside. In a days, in an age, in a day where unarmed black men have been shot. And the lawsuit claims Christian sexually assaulted a woman while she was working on a yacht chartered by the music mogul for a trip in late 2022. This accusation is just one of many in a series of lawsuits alleging sexual assault, trafficking, and other crimes against Combs, who has vehemently denied all allegations. I believe he was a coward. There's no way he should have let that happen to his kids. In this recent lawsuit filed in Los Angeles County Superior Court, Grace Omar Kay alleges that Christian assaulted her during what was supposed to be a family-friendly yacht outing that turned into something else entirely. The incident allegedly occurred just before Sean Combs hosted a New Year's Eve bash on the yacht with a slew of celebrity guests. Well, I think that the authorities came up with enough evidence to go into a judge by using the civil cases that has came upon him. Christian faces accusations of sexual assault, harassment, and emotional distress in the lawsuit, while Sean is being sued for premises liability for chartering the yacht and for allegedly aiding and abetting his son in the assault. However, the legal drama doesn't end there. Sean and Christian's lawyer, Aaron Dyer, has called the suit lewd and meritless, promising to file a motion to dismiss it. On the other side, Grace O'Marquet's lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn, isn't mincing words either, stating, like father, like son. He emphasizes that they take no pleasure in pursuing legal action against Christian, who seems to have followed in his father's footsteps. In her lawsuit, Omar K accuses Christian Combs of drugging and sexually assaulting her. She even provided audio recordings that she claims captured her rejecting his advances while he touched her inappropriately. These recordings, she says, were made by a producer in the studio. Omar Kai, who was 25 at the time, worked as a steward on the yacht, serving dinner and drinks from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. She alleges witnessing a lot of partying and drug use involving a mix of suspected sex workers and celebrities. She also claims to have noticed strange behavior after just one drink, suspecting that the alcohol might have been spiked with drugs. Around December 28, 2022, Omar K. learned that Christian Combs would be joining the party to record music with producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones in the yacht's makeshift studio. Although Christian had been staying at a villa on shore, he often joined his father's activities in the evenings, according to the suit. Omar K. alleges that he arrived heavily intoxicated and paid inappropriate attention to her. Christian then pressured Omar K. into taking shots of tequila, which she believes he brought on board. After she took the shot, she claims Christian became aggressive and insisted she drink more. Feeling fearful and suspecting the tequila had been spiked, Omar K began to experience its effects. The situation escalated as Christian groped Omar K's body, according to the suit. The lawsuit describes audio recordings where Omar K can be heard declining alcohol, expressing her need to leave, and telling Christian to stop touching her with what sounds like kissing noises in the background. These recordings were made by Jones, who was in the studio during the alleged assault, and who has his own lawsuit alleging that he was required to record Sean Combs constantly, capturing instances of alleged criminal conduct by the music mogul and his staff. NBC News has reviewed two audio clips transcribed in the suite, allegedly from December 28, 2022, but has not confirmed the identities of the individuals recorded. One of the recorded exchanges detailed in the suit involves Omar K telling Christian not to touch her legs inappropriately and expressing her need to leave. Christian insists that she stays with him, but she refuses unless he contacts a crew leader, knowing they would likely be unavailable. After leaving the studio, Omar K tried to get back to her duties to finish her shift, according to the lawsuit. 
but Christian Combs reportedly found her shortly after and insisted she find him a place to sleep. She directed him to the yacht cinema, which was being used as an extra sleeping area. However, once inside, he allegedly blocked her in and began groping her while undressing. The suit claims that Christian Combs tried to force Omar K to perform oral sex on him, even grabbing her arms forcefully. Photos included in the lawsuit show bruising on Omar K's forearm, allegedly caused by Christian's actions. Omar K fought him off until someone else entered the area, as per the suit. Following the alleged assault, Omar K's mental health, as well as her personal and professional life, took a serious hit. When she reported the incident to the yacht captain the next day, the suit alleges that the captain didn't believe her and failed to investigate. Instead, she claims the captain retaliated against her until she was fired in May 2023. The suit states that Omar K suffered from anxiety, panic attacks, severe suicidal thoughts, and even developed an eating disorder and epileptic seizures due to the emotional strain. Now, she's seeking unspecified damages for the ordeal she endured. Her attorney, Rodney S. Diggs, praised her bravery for coming forward with her truth, hoping it would inspire others to do the same. This lawsuit marks the first accusation of sexual assault against Christian Combs. His father, Sean Combs, has faced similar accusations from four women since November. One of these lawsuits has been settled, while the others remain unresolved. Additionally, a producer named Jones, who worked for Sean Combs, alleged sexual harassment and other misconduct against the rapper, including drugging drinks at parties. However, an attorney for Combs dismissed these allegations as fabricated attempts for attention. On March 25th, agents from Homeland Security Investigations conducted searches at Sean Combs' properties in Los Angeles and Miami. According to a source familiar with the situation, this federal investigation had been ongoing for some time, and authorities were already familiar with the layout of Combs' properties before the raids took place. During the searches last month, federal agents reportedly found guns and seized his phones under a warrant issued by the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. Christian Combs, Sean Combs' son, was present at his father's Los Angeles home during the search but was not arrested. Investigators are also reportedly looking into allegations of statutory rape against Sean Combs. NBC News previously reported that federal investigators had interviewed at least three women and one man regarding allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and the solicitation and distribution of illegal drugs and firearms. Following the property searches, Aaron Dyer, one of Combs' attorneys, issued a statement asserting that Combs had cooperated with authorities but was never detained. Dyer characterized the search as an ambush and criticized what he perceived as a rush to judgment based on what he called meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Dyer emphasized that no criminal or civil liability has been established regarding these allegations and reaffirmed Combs' innocence, stating that he will continue to fight to clear his name. Sean Diddy Combs' sons have lived a life filled with glitz and luxury, thanks to their high-flying dad. However, it seems that the two of them are now facing troubles reminiscent of their father's past. Justin Combs, 30, and his younger brother Christian King Combs, 26, found themselves briefly handcuffed and detained during a major raid at their father's Los Angeles estate by Homeland Security agents late last month. Now they're facing even more legal issues of their own. Christian's recent legal troubles stand in stark contrast to the ambitious plans he once had. Back in 2018, he shared his aspirations, saying, I want to get a Grammy, go platinum, buy my mom a nice villa, and get a Lamborghini. These dreams were inspired by his late mother, Kim Porter, who always encouraged him to think big. Tragically, Porter passed away just a few months after Christian expressed his goals. She left behind Christian, twin daughters Jesse James and Delilah Star 17, and their siblings from Sean Combs' other relationships. Sean Combs, known as Diddy, himself faced hardships growing up, losing his father at a young age. However, Christian grew up in a world of luxury, shuttling between multi-million dollar mansions. Despite their affluent upbringing, both Justin and Christian share a strong work ethic inherited from their father. Christian, who also shares Diddy's love for fashion, has been seen attending lavish parties and events, sometimes wearing a crown. In light of recent events, Justin and Christian's mother, Misa Hilton, 
has taken a stand against the legal turmoil surrounding her sons. She posted surveillance footage of the raid on social media, questioning the use of force against unarmed black men like her sons. Considering their father's antics, Justin and Christian will be in some deep water. Cassie, actual name Cassandra Ventura, filed a federal complaint against her former partner Sean Diddy Combs in November 2023, alleging physical and sexual abuse during their relationship. Combs allegedly abused Ventura by hitting her and forcing her to have sex with other men, as well as raping her at her house in 2018. The rapper settled his lawsuit inside a day. But since then, three additional women and one man have sued Combs, accusing him of a variety of abusive behavior, including sexual harassment, rape, non-consensual pornography, and sex trafficking. The issue worsened on March 25th, when federal officials from Homeland Security Investigations raided Combs' homes in Miami and Los Angeles. According to multiple reports, the raids were part of a federal sex trafficking investigation located in New York. The next day, Combs' lawyer, Aaron Dyer, issued a statement claiming that his client is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. The music mogul has disputed all of his accusers' claims. I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy, he said in December. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. Cassie claimed she was the victim of a pattern of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. Ventura filed suit under New York's Adult Survivors Act, which allowed victims a one-year opportunity to sue their alleged sexual abusers and institutions, even if the statute of limitations had expired. The window expired in November. She alleges she met Combs in 2005 when she was 19 and he was 37. In the case, she claims that Combs had control over almost every aspect of her life, including her job and access to her personal medical information. She claims he was routinely abusive, physically beating her multiple times a year, and plied her with copious amounts of drugs. The complaint also alleges that Combs forced Ventura to have intercourse with male sex workers in other cities, which she claims he witnessed, masturbated to, and videotaped. The singer claims she never went to the police because she was scared it would give Mr. Combs another excuse to hurt her. She further claims that after dinner in 2018, Combs forced himself into her apartment and assaulted her while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. Ventura claims she quit the relationship for good afterwards. In her claim, she cited several witnesses who observed the abuse occur. One of them is her friend, singer-songwriter Tiffany Redd, who penned an open letter to Combs about an incident during Ventura's 29th birthday celebration in 2015. Ventura and Red believe that Combs and his security crew ordered Ventura out that night because he wanted her to have sexual contacts with other men. Red claimed Ventura told her at the time that Combs was physically aggressive. I feel compelled to show up for Cassie and myself and confirm that everything she described in her complaint about what happened that night is consistent with what I experienced, she wrote in an email. Combs's lawyer, Benjamin Braffman, told the New York Times that his client disputed the charges and that the case was riddled with baseless and outrageous lies aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. Ventura and Combs resolved the lawsuit one day after it was filed. The specifics remain unknown. According to Braffman, the payment is in no way an admission of wrongdoing. I have decided to resolve this matter amicably under terms over which I have some control, Ventura stated in a statement. I want to thank my family, fans, and lawyers for their unwavering support. Meanwhile, Combs stated, We have decided to resolve this matter amicably. I wish Cassie and her family the best. Love. Following the settlement, Liza Gardner filed a lawsuit on November 23rd, shortly before the Adult Survivors Act expired. She claims she and a friend met Combs and singer-songwriter Aaron Hall at an MCA Records event in 1990 or 1991. They went back to Hall's place for an after party, where Gardner claims she was offered more drinks and coerced into having sex with Combs. She claims Combs also abused her friend. According to the lawsuit, the incident left Gardner shocked and traumatized, 
And as she changed, Hall allegedly barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced her to have sex with him. Gardner claims that Combs returned to the residence she shared with her companion a few days later and reportedly assaulted her again. He came to the residence looking for the buddy because he was afraid she would inform the girl he was with at the time, according to the claim. In a separate lawsuit filed on the same day, Joey Dickerson Neal claims that in 1991, she reluctantly went on a date with Combs, who intentionally drugged and sexually attacked her after dinner. She claims that Combs videotaped the attack and gave the footage to others. While Dickerson Neal did not contact the police immediately following the alleged assault, she claims she did later submit a police report to various agencies in New York and New Jersey. According to the complaint, prosecutors informed her that they would need to confirm her allegations, but she believes potential witnesses were terrified that Combs would retaliate against them and that they would lose future business and music opportunities if they made a statement supporting her account. Diddy's spokeswoman called the two women's charges fabricated and accused them of misusing the Adult Survivors Act. Another woman, known only as Jane Doe in the complaint, filed a fourth lawsuit on December 6th, alleging that Combs, his longtime sidekick Harve Pierre, and a third unidentified assailant gang-raped her at Combs's Manhattan recording studio in 2003 when she was 17 years old. Pierre, who formerly served as president of Combs's Bad Boy Entertainment, is also being sued by a former assistant who claims he used his position of authority as plaintiff's boss to groom, exploit, and sexually assault her many times between 2016 and 2017. According to the lawsuit, the men smuggled Doe across state lines from Detroit to New York City on a private jet, loaded her with drugs and booze until she couldn't consent, and then viciously abused her after she urged them to stop. The complaint also includes other images that Doe claims were captured at the studio on that night, including one of her sitting on Combs' lap. In February, Combs' former producer and cameraman filed a federal lawsuit against the mogul, accusing him of sexual harassment, drugging, and threats. According to the lawsuit, Rodney Lil Rod Jones collaborated on Combs' most recent album, Love, and lived with him from September 2022 to November 2023. Jones goes on to claim that he was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus by Mr. Combs. According to the lawsuit, Jones once awoke naked and bewildered in bed with Combs and two sex workers. He alleges that the music mogul drugged him. The complaint also alleges that Jones, as Combs' videographer, secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests, engaging in serious illegal activity. The suit charges criminal behavior such as drug acquisition, solicitation of sex workers, giving lace drinks to minors, and sexual assault. Jones's lawsuit names numerous additional defendants, including Combs's son Justin, Combs's chief of staff Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habdemariam. Combs' attorney Sean Hawley rejected Jones's allegations. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies, she said in an interview with People. In his lawsuit, Jones claims that he thought Combs was grooming him and that that fear became a reality when actor Cuba Gooding Jr. allegedly molested him on the music mogul's boat. The actor began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks and his shoulders, the complaint alleges. Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Gooding Jr., he rejected his advances, and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. A revised version of the complaint filed in late March lists Gooding Jr. as a defendant, according to People. According to the lawsuit, Combs's network supported his behavior so that he could have access to celebrities with whom he knew and associated. Mr. Combs was known for throwing the best parties, the suit states. Affiliation with and or sponsorship of Mr. Combs sex trafficking parties garnered legitimacy and access to celebrities such as famous athletes, political figures, artists, musicians, and international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry. The lawsuit contains no claims of wrongdoing against Prince Harry. 
One of Combs's associates, referred to as Mr. Combs's mule in Jones's lawsuit, was arrested on the same day at Miami's Opa Laca Airport while law police searched a plane associated with the music tycoon. Brendan Paul was charged with one count of possession of suspected cocaine and another count of possession of suspected marijuana candy, according to an affidavit obtained by TMZ. The arrest was unrelated to the raids, according to the publication. In late November, Diddy temporarily resigned as chairman of Revolt, the media firm he launched in 2013. While Mr. Combs has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, the company said in a press release, this decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of all black people throughout this country and the African diaspora. Capital Prep Harlem, a charter school he founded in 2016, has also announced the end of its affiliation with the music entrepreneur. According to Rolling Stone, at least 18 companies who had partnered with Diddy's e-commerce website Empower Global have quit the platform. Meanwhile, Variety says that a new reality program starring Combs, which was in the early stages of development at Hulu, has also been canceled in light of the allegations. The show, provisionally dubbed Diddy Plubby 7, would have focused on Combs and his family. Salxco, which previously managed Diddy as an artist, no longer shows him as a client on its website, Bloomberg says. And this isn't all exactly new for Diddy. There is a history of violence. The CCNY tragedy in 1991 remains a somber chapter in Sean Diddy Combs' past. Co-promoting a celebrity basketball game and concert at City College of New York, Combs found himself embroiled in a devastating incident where nine individuals lost their lives and 29 others sustained injuries. The tragedy unfolded due to overcrowding at the event, with nearly double the gym's capacity trying to attend. Security proved inadequate to manage the influx of attendees, leading to chaos. A scathing report by then New York City Mayor David Dinkins' administration, titled A Failure of Responsibility, pointed fingers at Combs for hiring insufficiently trained security personnel. The aftermath saw Combs facing a barrage of lawsuits from the families of those affected, culminating in a series of settlements that extended until 2000. In 1995, another unfortunate event cast a shadow over Combs's reputation. His friendship with Marion Sugay Knight, co-founder of Death Row Records, soured amidst a violent rivalry between Death Row and Bad Boy. The tragic death of Jake Robles, a security guard associated with Knight, outside an Atlanta nightclub further fueled tensions. An altercation between members of Bad Boy and Death Row escalated into gunfire, resulting in Robles' untimely demise. Combs has consistently denied any involvement in the shooting, despite being held responsible by Knight. The year 1998 brought further controversy when Combs and two others attacked music executive Steve Stout. The incident occurred after Stout, then managing Nas, mistakenly sent MTV a version of the Hate Me Now music video featuring Combs as Jesus Christ being crucified. Outraged by the portrayal, Combs confronted Stout in his New York City office, leading to a physical altercation. Stout alleged severe injuries, including a broken arm and jaw, while Combs admitted to inappropriate behavior and subsequently apologized. The legal aftermath resulted in Combs attending a one-day anger management class. And then there is a very dark incident now being investigated. Nearly 25 years ago, in 1999, the early hours of a chilly winter night witnessed a momentous event in the heart of New York City. Three NYPD detectives were summoned to the Midtown North Precinct, responding to a shooting incident that had erupted inside a Times Square club, leaving three bystanders wounded. At the center of the turmoil were rap mogul Sean Combs, then known as Puffy, his girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, his bodyguard Anthony Wolf Jones, and rapper Jamal Shine Barrow. The aftermath saw Lopez, then 30, detained in the cage of the station house while Combs awaited questioning, his grand plans for a millennium celebration momentarily put on hold. Now, nearly a quarter century later, the events of that fateful night and the subsequent high-profile trial in early 2001 have resurfaced in the public eye. 
Recent developments suggest that the infamous shooting and its legal fallout may undergo renewed scrutiny as part of a broader federal investigation into comps, now 54 and known as Ditti, whose past includes other mysterious shooting incidents. Homeland Security agents conducted raids on Combs properties in Los Angeles and Miami, prompted by allegations of sex trafficking. According to New York criminal defense attorney Michael DiCioaro, involved with the case, federal authorities are actively seeking to corroborate evidence and testimonies from various sources. Every aspect of Combs' past and present is under intense scrutiny. One lawsuit brought by Rodney Jones accuses Combs of violence, including threats and the brandishing of firearms, and suggests the possibility of tampering with witnesses and jurors during the 1999 nightclub shooting trial involving Shine. The shooting itself originated from an altercation between Combs and a Brooklyn figure known as Scar, Matthew Allen. The subsequent trial lasted seven weeks, culminating in Diddy and Jones being acquitted, while Barrow received a conviction on assault and gun possession charges, resulting in a 10-year prison sentence. Despite the passage of time, the Club New York shooting remains shrouded in mystery. Former NYPD detective Derek Parker, known as the Hip Hop Cop, reflects on the case, now pursuing it as a private investigator, seeking to unravel the lingering enigmas surrounding that night in 1999. For years, rumors have swirled around Diddy regarding his involvement in the infamous incident involving Shine, now known as Moses Michael Levi Barrow, who has since become an opposition leader in the House of Representatives in Belize. According to Derek Parker, a former NYPD detective, the altercation that led to the shooting stemmed from tensions between Diddy, who was flaunting his wealth, and a figure named Scar Matthew Allen, who felt slighted by Diddy's behavior. The exchange of words escalated into gunfire, with shots ringing out inside the club as chaos ensued. As the situation escalated, Diddy and Jennifer Lopez hastily exited the club in a Lincoln Navigator, speeding through the streets of New York City. Their driver, Wardle Fenderson, recalled Lopez's shock as she recounted the events, with Shine reportedly firing shots into the air as they fled. However, their escape was short-lived as they were soon apprehended by police. Inside the precinct, tensions ran high with Lopez facing admonishment from her mother for getting involved with Diddy. Despite spending 14 hours in custody, Lopez was eventually released without being charged. Natanya Rubin, one of the victims of the club shooting, maintains that Diddy was responsible for her injuries, claiming she witnessed the altercation firsthand. She vividly recalls the harrowing experience, having sustained gunshot wounds to her face. In a lawsuit brought by Rodney Jones, damning allegations surfaced against Diddy, accusing him of boasting about the shooting and bribing witnesses and jurors to secure his acquittal. Jones also alleges that Diddy admitted to using Lopez to smuggle the gun into the club. However, Diddy vehemently denies these accusations through his attorneys, describing the federal raids as a witch hunt and condemning the excessive use of force by law enforcement. Backing Didi's stance is Glenn Beck, a security worker at the club that fate full night who testified during the 2001 trial. Beck dismisses Jones's claims as baseless and asserts that Shine, whom they knew well, was a volatile figure from Brooklyn. As tensions simmered between Diddy and Scar Matthew Allen, Glenn Beck, a key witness to the events of that night, recalls the pivotal moment when Shine entered the fray. Shine, who had left the club briefly and returned unsearched, swiftly became embroiled in the altercation. Beck vividly recounts the chaos that ensued, with Shine allegedly firing shots before attempting to flee the scene. However, his escape was short-lived as law enforcement swiftly apprehended him. During the trial, Shine admitted to firing a gun during the altercation, but has not implicated Diddy in orchestrating his involvement. However, Rodney Jones, in his lawsuit against Diddy, implicates Fahim Muhammad, Diddy's chief of security, as a mastermind fixer with connections within the LAPD. Beck disputes claims that Lopez could have been involved in smuggling a gun into the club, citing her attire and physique as evidence to the contrary. However, these revelations are just the tip of the iceberg, as federal investigators are poised to re-examine not only the 1999 shooting, but also other incidents involving Diddy. Jones alleges that Diddy lied about his and his son Justin Combs' involvement in a 2022 shooting at the Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles. 
According to Jones, the altercation escalated into gunfire during a heated conversation, resulting in injuries to a friend of Justin known as G. Jones claims that Diddy instructed him to mislead the police about the circumstances of the shooting, implicating Fahim Muhammad as a powerful figure capable of making problems disappear. Despite the gravity of these allegations, the LAPD has remained tight-lipped on the matter, leaving many unanswered questions lingering in the air. What do you think will happen? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.